Hello. Um, I want to show you something I found yesterday, which is just huge, and I've never seen that size before. And um, I will solve that secret very fast. This is it. It's a huge cadet. It's so big that I don't really know what to do with it. And I have found four of it. So um, that gives me a lot of flesh to work with. And today I will pickle and ferment them. And I will let you be part of it, learning how to ferment and pickle a uh, squash. Uh, no, squash the wrong word. Courgette. Yes. I'm inside now and it's time to ferment the courgettes. Meanwhile, the rumor has arisen that the courgette is actually a squash and um, not a courgette. So, I don't know, I've tasted it raw. I felt it tastes very much like a courgette, but then again also a little like a squash. So I'm really confused. doesn't matter because we can still ferment it. And we will start now. So here I let you have one last look at the massive squash, courgette, whatever it is, and the things we will be using. Here we are having coriander and mustard seeds, salt, eventually water mixed with the salt, so that will be the brine, and a real good mixer. Let's get started. Okay, there we go, cutting the courgette in small pieces, preparing it for the mixer afterwards, something I will regret because the mixer makes it mainly into a mash consistency, something I find really hard to work with in ferments because I have a tough time keeping them under the brine. Under the brine means keeping them below the water and um, I don't have fermentation weights. That is something that you can put on your produce that presses it down and naturally keeps it that way under your brine. Sometimes you might have to add on a little more water because it seems to disappear mysteriously overnight. And next thing we make is the brine now. The ratio here is two teaspoons of salt for four cups of water. In this case we have three teaspoons of salt and therefore six cups of water. The first cup I add is usually hot boiling water so I can properly distribute the salt in the whole brine because here the salt dissolves nicely. Now you can add cold water onto it and therefore use it really fast and you don't have to wait for this whole thing to cool down. That's the amazing brine, something you can use with all the things you want to ferment. Of course, we have the other option of using only salt and no water. So for that, you can watch my fermentation tutorial that just focuses on fermenting and also pointing out the, the difference to pickling. So there we go. Now cutting a garlic. I add that onto the fermentation or the thing I want to ferment because it has amazing medicinal properties that are just enhanced by fermenting that and um, it just really adds a rich taste. I'm also adding coriander and mustard seeds for the taste but also for the properties. Now fermentation process enhances herbs, plants, veggies with probiotics and a friendly yeast that detoxifies the body and keeps one clean. So fermented herbs plants and anything else, they keep the body vital and they really boost the immune system. It's such a beautiful art in a way, I feel, fermenting. It's also finding out over time what you like to ferment, how you ferment it, how often you keep checking on it. It's almost a little like a pet as well. And then to what degree do you let it ferment? Of course, waiting longer makes it even more, more sour, but also more rich in the taste. And um, yeah, you're mainly kind of bringing back life to this plant that you're working with. And it's just really magical. Now here you see the not how not to do it part that I will soon skip. <laughs> and then I will move to cutting. 
Okay, so here we go again now, cutting the courgettes a little smaller this time. I will put them now into the mash that I have created and hope that this all will taste really good also in three weeks from now. And then now getting another jar, filling the smaller cut pieces in that and then adding all the remaining stuff. So keep checking on that daily, making sure that you're always opening the lid again and um, that you try to keep it under the brine in case you don't have a fermentation weight. If you use one, then check on it still because it can be that all of a sudden the water solution is disappearing and you have to fill in a little more. So now adding all the herbs, <coughs> sorry, adding all the herbs, adding the garlic, pouring water over it, closing it. It's so easy, it's so healthy, it's super refreshing. It preserves it for such a long time and, and that's mainly it.